Hello everyone, I am Akash Pathak. Today we are going to talk about wireless mesh networks. In the current scenario, all of us want to be connected to the internet every time and everywhere. This can be easily achieved by wireless mesh network. Today I am going to talk on following issues. These are the existing wireless network technologies. Wireless networking can be broadly divided into two types of categories that is single hop and multi hop. So our concern for today is multi hop infrastructure based hybrid and that is wireless mesh networks. So first of all we need to know what is wireless mesh network. It is a communication network made up of radio nodes organized in a mesh topology. Nodes have two functions. They generate or terminate traffic. They route traffic for other nodes. It consists of mesh clients, mesh routers and gateways. The mesh clients are often laptops, cell phones and other wireless devices while the mesh routers forward traffic to and from the gateways which may need not be connected to the internet. For example, suppose we are playing counter strike. So we need not to be connected to the internet but at least laptops should be connected to each other. The coverage area of the radio nodes working as a single network is sometimes called as a mesh cloud. A mesh network is reliable and offers redundancy. Now we should take a look on what is actually a wireless mesh network. So this is wireless mesh network architecture. The laptops, phones using VoIP and the personal computers, PCs, all these things are connected to the internet via routers, switches and modems. The mesh router connected to each other, the wireless client, us. We are using internet using our mobile phones, laptops, PCs. We, connect, we are connected to the internet via routers and modems. These are mesh routers, gateway nodes, wired connection and wireless connection. The data can take a lot of paths from source to destination. The multiple paths are available. Now we will see characteristics of wireless mesh networks. multi of wireless mesh network. Support for ad hoc networking and capability of self-forming, self-healing and self-organization. Mobility dependence on the type of mesh node. So there is a question why wireless mesh network? Because wireless mesh networks have the capabilities of self-organizing, self-healing and self-forming within the network. Which is very essential when there are multiple static and mobile nodes in the architecture. We will see that in our simulation. The protocols which wireless mesh networks use. These are IEEE 802.11, IEEE 802.15, IEEE 802.16. The wireless mesh network is formed automatically once the mesh nodes have been configured and activated, which reduces setup time and maintenance cost owing to its self-forming nature. Due to the self-healing nature of WMLs, a disjoint node rejoins the network seamlessly and does not require reconfiguration once restored. VMNs are self-organizing, that is if there is an obstacle present in the path between the source and the destination nodes, the next reliable shortest path between the source and destination is calculated using routing protocols and transfer of data packets take place through this alternate path. This solves the line of sight problem and minimizes the loss of data packets. Mesh routers have minimal mobility and perform dedicated routing and configuration which significantly decreases the load of mesh clients and other end nodes. Alternate paths can be chosen which allows the traffic load to be balanced in the network. Load balancing and minimizing the bottleneck via alternate routing can significantly increase network liability in VMLs. This is the wireless mesh network architecture which you saw earlier. Now we will talk about types of wireless mesh networks. There are three types of wireless mesh networks infrastructure or backbone, client and hybrid. So let's see what is infrastructure backbone wireless mesh network. Mesh routers form a mesh network among themselves, provides backbone for clients and enables integration of wireless mesh networks with existing wireless networks and internet through gateway functionalities. Clients connect to mesh router with wireless link or ethernet. So this is the diagram of infrastructure wireless mesh network. This is actually the wireless mesh network which we use at our home. Now we will see client WML. Client nodes constitute peer to peer network. It means there is no need of routers between them. As you can see in the figure, there are no routers or repeaters placed between two nodes. Nodes are directly connected to each other. 
So client node constitute peer-to-peer -peer network and perform routing and configuration functionalities as well as provide end user applications to custom multi-hop routing. Client nodes have to perform additional functions such as routing and self-configuration. This is the hybrid wireless mesh network. A combination of infrastructure and client meshing. Infrastructure provides connectivity to other networks such as internet, Wi-Fi, WiMAX, cellular and sensor tech networks. Mesh clients can access the network through mesh routers as well as directly meshing with other mesh clients. The routing capabilities of clients provide better connectivity and coverage. This is the diagram of hybrid wireless mesh network. So as we can see here, laptops and mobiles are connected via mesh routers and mesh routers are connected to the internet. Now we will talk about the applications of wireless mesh networks. Some of the common applications are as follows. Wireless mesh networks can be used in emergency situations like human animal conflict, road accidents, etc. They can be used in tunnels and on the oil rigs also. In battlefield surveillance, they can give you an extra edge. High speed mobile video applications on board public transport, real time racing car telemetry, some current applications. US military forces are now using wireless mesh, net mesh networking to connect their computers, mainly ruggedized laptops in field operations. Nowadays electric meters are being deployed in the buildings and they send the data directly to the central office and there is no need for human meter readers or need to connect the meters with cables. So let's talk about operation, how the data bits are transferred from one place to another. The principle is similar to the way packets travel around the wired internet. Data will hop from one device to another until it reaches its destination. Dynamic routing algorithms implemented in each device allow this to happen. To implement such dynamic routing protocols, each device needs to communicate routing information to other devices in the network. Each device then determines what to do with the data it receives. Either pass it on to the next device or keep it depending upon the protocol. The routing algorithm used should attempt to always ensure that the data takes the most appropriate route to the destination. Now we will talk about protocol design. The physical layer, MAC layer, network layer, transport layer and application layer. So first let's see physical layer. Orthogonal frequency multiple access has significantly increased the speed of IEEE 802.11 from 11 Mbps to 54 Mbps. Ultra wideband can achieve much higher rate of short distance applications. Multiple input and multiple output can increase system capacity by 3 times or even more. Frequency agile or cognitive radios can achieve much better spectrum utilization. In the MAC layer, differences between wireless mesh networks MACs and wireless networks MACs is as follows. MACs for VMNs are concerned with more than one hop communication. MAC must be distributed and collaborative and must work for multipoint to multipoint communication. Network self-organization is needed for better collaboration between neighboring nodes and nodes in multi-hop distances. Mobility affects the performance of MAC. In the routing layer, the features of routing protocol for wireless mesh networks are as follows. Multiple performance metrics. Hop count is not an effective routing metric. Other performance metrics example link quality and round trip time must be considered. Scalability. Routing setup in large network is time consuming. Node states on the path may change. Scalability of routing protocol is critical in wireless mesh networks. Routing protocol. Robustness. Wireless mesh networks must be robust to link failures or congestion. Routing protocols need to be fault tolerant with link failures and can achieve load balancing. Adaptive support for both mesh routers and mesh clients mesh routers. Minimal mobility, no constraint for power consumption, routing is simpler. <coughs> mesh clients, mobility, power efficiency, routing is complicated. Need to design a routing protocol that can adaptively support both mesh routers and mesh clients. So the research issues related to transport layer are cross layer solution to network asymmetry. Routing protocol can select an optimal path for both data and ACK packets. ACK here is acknowledgement. MAC layer and error control may need to treat TCP data and acknowledgement packets differently. Adaptive TCP 
Wireless mesh networks will be integrated with the internet and various wireless networks such as IEEE 802.11, 802.16, 802.15. 802 Same TCP is not effective for all networks. Applying different TCPs in different networks is a complicated and costly approach and cannot achieve satisfactory performance. Application layer. Applications supported by WMNs are internet access. Advantages of WMS low cost, higher speed and easy installation. Distributed information storage and sharing. Data sharing between nodes within the wireless mesh networks. Query or retrieval of information located in distributed database servers. Information exchange across multiple wireless networks. Cellular phone talks Wi-Fi phone through WMS. Wi-Fi user monitors the status of wireless sensor networks. Now we will talk about the common protocols that are into the field for wireless mesh networks. The three most common protocol used are as follows. AODV, Ad Hoc On Demand Distance Vector Protocol. Here the network is silent. Actually this protocol is reactive and when there is a need then only the response will come. Here the network is silent until a connection is needed. At the point the network node that needs a connection broadcasts a request for connection. DSDV destination sequenced distance vector routing protocol. This is a proactive protocol and it is a table driven routing protocol for ad hoc mobile networks based on Bellman Ford algorithm. OLSR is a proactive link state routing protocol which uses hello and topology control messages to discover and then disseminate link state information through the mobile ad hoc network. Individual nodes use this topology information to compute next hop destinations for all nodes in the network using shortest hop forwarding paths. Now I am going to talk about the simulation. The simulation was done on the software known as Network Simulator. It is based on the Ubuntu platform. The parameters which we have used are nodes, 100 nodes were present, 50 static and 50 mobile. Simulation time was 150 seconds and the area covered for simulation was 100 into 100 square meters. Path loss exponent was 2, shadowing deviation was 8. So now we can see the simulation. The nodes numbered from 0 to 50 are mobile nodes and the num nodes numbered from 51 to 100 are static nodes. So as you can see the data transmission has been started. The mobile nodes are moving from one place to another and these circles which you are seeing this is the broadcasting of our network and the data bits are being sent from one destination to another as per request and the mobile nodes are moving here and there. As you can see there is no movement in the static nodes actually they are the routers placed at different positions according to our need. This is a 150 second simulation and the step is of 125 milliseconds. That's why actually it is going so fast. So you can see now the nodes are distributed and they are not coagulated at any one position. Now we'll talk about simulation results. So this was the phase one of simulation where nodes were moving. Now the nodes have distributed themselves. This was the congestion window. In the beginning when nodes started moving, there was a steep rise in the congestion. But in the middle of the uh, simulation time, you can, have, you can see that there is no much congestion because a minimal data transfer is there. But at the end, again they have uh, increased the congestion in the network. This is maybe because of uneven placing of the nodes and all. As of now we have seen the simulation and it's time to see the results what the results say. So the average throughput was 448 kilobits per second. End to end delay between two nodes like the data started from one node and the time it took to reach the other node that is the average 187 milliseconds. Constant bit rate. The number of bits received were 15269 and the number of bits sent were 15392. So as we can see that R by S ratio that is the number of bits received by number of bits sent was 0 0.9920 that is pretty close to 1. It is beneficial for us to get the value nearer to 1 because the nearer the value to 1 the more proper the simulation was.
Normalized routing load was 0.262. It means that the link was not congested at all. The data transmission was smooth and there was not much load over the link. So what we can conclude from this? Scalability. Based on existing MAC routing and transport protocols, network performance is not scalable with either the number of nodes or the number of hops in the network. Security. Actually these wireless mesh networks are installed at some remote areas also. So these are very much vulnerable to security attacks in various protocol layers. Current security approaches may be effective to a particular attack in a specific protocol layer. Self-organization and self-configuration capability is a desired feature in wireless mesh networks. It requires protocols in wireless mesh networks to distribute and collaborate. For any other questions, kindly post the questions in the comments. I'm really looking forward to answer those questions. Thanks a lot. Have a good day.